This is St. Helen's Church, Ashby de la Zouche. There has been a church in Ashby since at least the middle of the 12th century, and probably long before that. We don't know what the early church looked like, but it probably stood on this site. The earliest part of this church was built in the 1470s by William Hastings, later Lord Hastings, who also turned the medieval house next door into a castle. If you're a visitor to Ashby, you'll probably be visiting the castle if you haven't already done so. But don't forget to come and have a look at St Helens as well. It's full of a wealth of history and heritage, enough to rival any castle. Come on, let's go and have a look. Walking into the church, you're bound to be impressed. Everywhere you look, there are memorials, monuments, and fine architectural details. But you really need to come here to appreciate all that. Anyway, I'm not going to tell you everything about the church today, just a few tasters to whet your appetite and convince you that you really need to come in person. This is our bell tower. Can you count the number of ropes? If you can't, maybe you need to come down and count them in person. One of our bells is medieval and two of them date from the time of the Napoleonic Wars at the beginning of the 19th century. The bells are still rung regularly and they make a fine sound. Now just look at this contraption. What do you think it is? Get the picture? church discipline was taken very seriously in those days. It's a finger pillory and as far as we know only two exist in the country today. The other one is at Littlecote House in Wiltshire and was used for the control of unruly servants. This is Robert Nundy and his two wives. For a long time, we thought his name was Mundy, but that turned out to be a slip of the chisel on the stonemason's part. Nundy's first wife was called Elizabeth, and after she died, he married again, this time a lady called Alice, though for a long time, we thought she was called Elizabeth too. Can you guess which one is which? Nundy was a wealthy businessman in the town, and when he died in 1526, he left a sum of money for a requiem mass to be said regularly to speed his passage through purgatory and into heaven. Unfortunately for him, after a few years, the money was diverted into a fund for a new grammar school in the town. Look up above the door. This is Marjorie Wright. She was born in the town around 1557, but she lived most of her life in London and she died there in 1623. So why have we got a statue of her here in the church and such a prominent statue at that? Well, you'll have to come to find out more, but we can tell you she left a legacy to the town, a legacy which continues to this day. Look at this candelabra. It was donated by Thomas Piddock in 1723. Do you think it looks impressive? Valuable even? Well, thieves in 1776 certainly thought so, but they were in for a surprise. On the night of the 22nd of July, they broke into the church and stole 12 branches from it, along with several other items. The candelabra branches were later recovered when the thieves dumped them in a hedge in disappointment and disgust. Now, why would that be? 
This is the oldest monument in the church. The figure lying here dates from the late 15th century and originally lay in the old north aisle of the church before the church was extended at the end of the 19th century. We don't actually know who this man was, but there are some clues as to what he was. His broad brimmed hat, his staff, and most significantly of all, the scallop shell motif. Do you know what the scallop shell signifies? Go away and look it up and then come and visit our chap here. And here's another puzzle. The SS collar is a Lancastrian symbol, but here's the Hastings Maunch, and the Hastings family were Yorkists. So who were the Hastings family? You've already heard a bit about William Hastings, who built the church in the 1470s, but you're going to hear a bit about more members of the Hastings family very soon. This is the chapel of St Michael and All Angels. It commemorates people who lost their lives in conflict. Do you know what these flags are? Here lies Francis Hastings, second Earl of Huntingdon, who was born in 1513, and his wife, Catherine. Impressive, isn't it? Around the sides of the tomb are carved effigies of their 11 children, five daughters and six sons. In fact, this chapel is called the Hastings Chapel and there are memorials all around it to members of the Hastings family. So you won't be surprised to hear that for centuries they were the leading noble and land-owning family in this area. Catherine was closely related to two kings of England, Edward IV and Richard III, and there has been speculation in the past as to whether their descendants might actually be the true heirs to the throne of England. Many members of the Hastings family are buried in the vaults beneath the church here, and more of them in the vaults beneath the chapel in the castle just over there. The ashes of one of the most recently deceased members of the Hastings family were interred there as recently as 2002. And Robin Hood? What's all that about? Behind this door is the present-day vestry, but it's believed that this room may once have been a side chapel to the church which predated William Hastings' 1470s building. Above the vestry is a room now known as the priest's room, and if you look up there, you can see a squint where the priest could have sat in his room above the vestry and look down to see what his congregation were doing. This magnificent brass plaque commemorates another member of the Hastings family, Selina, Countess of Huntingdon, who lived through most of the 18th century. A very religious woman, Selina was widowed at the age of 39. She started her own evangelical Christian movement known as the Countess of Huntingdon's Connection and founded a college for the training of ministers, which still survives as Cheshunt College in Cambridge today. Also still surviving are a small group of chapels in the southeast of England. This is the Lady Chapel. It contains memorials to two remarkable men. Why remarkable? Well, Here's Edward Mamet. He was organist here for over 40 years and achieved many things over his lifetime, despite a very significant disability. And here is Arthur Hildersham. Arthur Hildersham was vicar here twice in the late 16th and early 17th centuries. And between terms of office, he was banned and even jailed. So what was that all about? Well, you'll just have to visit to find out.
Well, we've given you a quick look around the church, but why not come down and have a proper look yourself? And whilst you're here, don't forget to have a good look around the churchyard as well. There's a really interesting sundial on the side of the tower and there's lots of fascinating memorials and gravestones as well. We'll see you soon. Bye.